you can start to discover that depending on how hard you push the trigger or how quickly you make the stroke, oh, wow. you can actually get quite a lot of subtle variation in how the things get put down. It's really responsive. It's very responsive. Yeah. We're trying to make it as fluid and as intuitive as possible. And so, like, if I lightly tap the... Uh, oh, hang on a minute. If I lightly tap the, uh, the right trigger, for example, I can do a small aurora, but then if I put it all the way down, it'll get thicker and thicker. So it just gives you um, a nice amount of gesture mm -hmm. for you to experiment with. And there's some, some rules that keep them all kind of consistent, um, so you're never confused as to how they will work. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, for example, depending on how quickly I pull these strokes out, you get different variation in how they animate and come to life as well. And Look at really that, it's already, like, stunning. <laughs> <laughs> we're really fortunate that we have actually um, uh, two traditional uh, 2D hand uh, animators on staff, uh, Becky and Lucy Roberts. So we, we do traditional 2D animation to previs uh, the, the, the brushes. Yeah. This is beautiful. Dominic, you've made a masterpiece in just about 45 <laughs> seconds. There I you go. It's a, a true testament. And I can't draw at all in real life, so. You could take I, all the credit I for it. I was about to say, my biggest thing is I am very bad at drawing. I'm very bad at painting in real life. So this gets me so excited to be like, I'm going to create a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a master painter. <laughs> there you go. And I have created something beautiful. And then this is the other main component of the painting, which is making these so creatures painting. as well. So yes. you, uh, as you explore the world, you find missing pages from your notebook, and every time you find those, they give you a new painting technique or a new part for your, your palette here. And so I can pick different body types, and depending on how I paint the creature, and I can make the body different, and, or I could, I could do a quadruped one like that, but I'm going <laughs> to stick to do this. Um, and depending on the things that I add, he'll have a different personality when he comes to life. And I hear the colors matter as well. Yes, the colors matter too. So this guy is red, which means that he has an inherent fire ability. And you can add attachments onto the attachments, onto the attachments. <laughs> so Dominic, really I'm kinda... afraid that's too many attachments. <laughs> Just gone over no such thing. You've no made a happy thing. little accident. Yeah. And so if I bring him to life. Yay! He's liking that. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's my little buddy. <laughs> the facial expressions are the best. <laughs> Dominic, I feel like, you know, we've probably touched on this in the past, but this seems so perfectly custom built for gamers of all ages. I mean, uh, you know, a, a, ch a young child yep. or someone that doesn't game often can come in here and, and kind of embrace and enjoy something that's inherently creative. I mean, was that kind of fundamental to the design process? Absolutely. I mean, Jeff, do you want to talk a little about that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We want to make sure that it's uh, accessible to everyone. Yeah. And it's fun to watch uh, young kids play the game also because they may just want to make a hundred rainbows on one wall or a giant sun. Uh, but you can also, you know, spend a lot of time and do really high fidelity paintings too. So it, it's really accessible to, to everyone. What was the design process like for the tool set? I mean, when you were early on in development, you knew kind of the general vision that you wanted to, to go after. You know, how did you break that down in, on the technical side and kind of create something that would actually be so seamless in, in the end? Well, we went through quite a bit of iteration for the, the, painting, the paintings themselves. In fact, we did a lot of um, 2D visual development to try to at work with our engineering department to say, hey, how, how can we push this? And we did a lot of, like I was mentioning before, like hand-drawn 2D animation to say, boy, this would be amazing to have the world come alive in this way. Um, and we kind of continue to Beautiful. push our engineering department to develop tools that would kind of realize that reality. And it, it took, it took uh, quite a, a number of years to actually be able to get to this point. How does your team internally sort of balance and connect the technical challenges and those, those technical innovations with the creative side and kind of the fact that this is by nature a creative, beautiful, organic, uh, you know, tool, um, but it's obviously built upon very complex tech? Yeah, we're, we're really it's lucky in that our team is so small that you can actually see each other from across You're the just room. just waving, waving that, across that, the that's hall. That's actually a reality. So uh, we have a lot of uh, collaboration that occurs. So we, we, um, 
we, we actually just uh, continue to have the team, uh, we have daily reviews where we, we have discussions about what we'd like to achieve, and then we task people to try to, 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 to realize what we're showing during those reviews. And that, that really yields a really strong outcome, and it also gives a lot of ownership uh, to each person to try to, to hit what we're, what we're trying to achieve visually. Was there a particular art style that you kind of used as a base or a root that uh, the team was inspired by when making the visuals for this, uh, this game? Yeah, we, we started off, in particular for the 3D world, um, we're really inspired by like uh, stop motion animation. In particular, the, the quality of stop motion animation where you have, you know, the clothing on some of the characters are, are actually hand knitted or you know, hand painted or, uh, you know, every plank on the wall is, is made by hand for, uh, for stop motion. And we, we tried to kind of take that same approach when modeling in our world where, you know, the, the edges of the buildings are asymmetrical and, you know, we try to tell the story of the world through even the ironwork that you see. So, um, like, the attention to detail is, is definitely important for us in the, in the 3D world. And then we actually have two art styles because we have the the complete 2D world that we've developed too, where we're inspired by like um, traditional illustration, um, like children's book illustration, yeah. but also um, illustration in general. And then, and then also, um, you know, color palettes that are complementary and that, that pop off the wall and that are dynamic. And as you, as, you, uh, as you continue to build your brush set throughout the game, those even have an effect on the environment. We're not showing those today, but uh, they, they, they're really quite dramatic. A little was, tease for the future. I was yeah. going to say, that was going to be my biggest question, is that you're literally painting over this entire town and completely revitalizing it. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Well, hello. What's, okay. what's, what's fun, you can even be on top of the, the rooftops of the city and, and paint down onto the uh, city itself. Oh, wow. And when you're using super paint, which, which really has an effect on the the kind of the scale of your pain you can you can really uh, create some dynamic compositions beautiful so uh, can these monsters go to every painting that you've gone through so could the monster that you created earlier interact with this monster only if it's been on the same land mass. The same, I see. yeah so they're kind of landlocked and you know we ex we explored whether we wanted you to take the creatures with you mm -hmm. um, but actually it's nice to spend time apart because you miss yeah. them and they're happy when you turn back up. Oh, so I love that. <laughs> I love that they can't wait to see you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's really fun even for the team to see how the creatures are going to yeah. react. It uh, makes for a difficult uh, screenshot because uh, <laughs> in time they'll, they'll sort of like photobomb each other or interact with each other or... <laughs> game game dev yeah, problems, it's, it's, right? Uh, it's really, um, it's, it's a lot of fun though to... Yeah, Jeff, Dominic, it's such a pleasure to have you guys on our stage. Kristen, thank you Great. so much yeah. for uh, for sharing in the.